And welcome back, YouTube family. We just finished up all of the fields on the east. We're heading over to the 25 and 23 fields that we had planned on planting soybeans. So let me change that to soybeans before I forget. We are still in the process of wondering if there is you know, process. Weird way to phrase it. We are still wondering if there is rain coming today. So far, so good. We could really use there to not be rain because we are kind of pressed for time trying to get these soybeans planted. If it does indeed rain Sunday and Monday, we could possibly be in trouble. We currently do not have enough food planted for our pigs. So hopefully we can Okay, let me stop talking, figure out how I'm going to plant this field. It looks a little bit longer north to south, so let's just, yeah, let's just pull right in here. I think that's a pretty good idea. We'll unfold the planter, and I can just start the end rows right here going west. I think that is as good a plan as any. And... Energize! Panther. Uh, we are a little bit... Let's get a little bit over there. A little bit more. Go. That should... Right at the edge. Alright, and lower. Let's go. Hopefully, the weather continues like this. There's still not very many clouds in the sky, as you can see yourself. This field is just so small, it's not even worth... <laughs> it's just so stinking small. Anyway, the... What was I going to say? I don't think there's a fence here to the left. I think we're safe turning around there. It's kind of a bad way to find out that there is a fence. We probably should have gotten out and checked... To see if there's anything hiding in the grass before we drove through it. Anyway, what were we talking about? Yeah, the cows are the ones, the, the animals that are going to need the most help. They are around 55% uh, productivity right now. They need the manure cleaned out. They need the cleanliness. Uh, the, you know, so they need the grass put, grass pushed back in. The feed trough and oh, I think we can make that one. I think we can do, we'll try three passes of end rows. I think that's good. All right, let's do some north-south rows. And we'll do the end rows on the other side of the field when we get there. Yeah, so the cows and, you know, the, the good news is of taking care of the animals, we have quite a bit of wool we can sell. We have quite a bit of milk we can deliver. And I'm actually thinking about, uh, I don't want to run into the fence. We will cut it off early and we'll do some end rows down here. Yeah, so I think we're going to sell some pigs because right now we just do not have near enough crops planted to be able to allow the pigs to live through summer and winter without buying the very expensive pig feed. So I think that is the plan. Let's straighten up here. Oh, actually, we were pretty straight. Probably could have just dropped it and went. But I do like things to be as straight as possible. It's good practice. And let's go. The Okay, so that's right. This side has a curve. Uh, should I turn, make that, no. no, this is straight enough, or it's not enough of an angle where we'll just run it out straight like this. Back up a little bit here. Try to make a wide enough turn. Yeah, I don't think there's a fence there. Like I said, we shouldn't really find out if there is a fence that way. We should really 
Yeah, that's straight enough. We should really get out and walk it to make sure there's nothing in there. But I think we verified that there is no fence. Famous last words, right? All right, let's just go back and get some inroads down. And we really should have been using, I mean, not inroads, we already have inroads. Really should have been using a marker. So that was a huge mistake. That is the worst feeling in the world in the real life when planting. If you uh, turn around and you realize that you for either forgot to put the marker down or a couple times I've had a, a little malfunctioning marker where you drop the marker but the hydraulics, I don't know if we have air in the line or what happened that year, but it just started floating up about halfway through the field and I didn't realize it until, <laughs> you know, halfway, halfway through the pass, so it's, it's not very good when you realize that you don't have a marker to travel and guide you. For soybeans, it's not quite as bad, but like I've said many times, corn, you just, you have to have straight rows, as straight as possible. All right, let's drop the cedar and marker. There we go. You know, I was looking at the, I think it's Pro Seed or Seed Extension. There's a mod that allows you to control the markers individually, and that is essentially what we need. I, I actually originally disregarded it because I did not think, like, there's a whole bunch of other functions to shut off, to shut off individual rows and stuff like that, and we don't really need that kind of functionality. We're going to be using... GPS most of the time, and you know this feels just a little bit small, so we'll just use markers. But I think it would be really nice to have those markers being able to be dropped individually, so I don't have to drop it each time. In real life, it's it's not this planter is not too far from real life, being one button controlling both markers. It's just a little bit different than real life. Uh, in real life. The R planner, at least, and I think this is how most planners work. There is one set of hydraulics, one hydraulic lever that controls both markers. And the way the planter works is it's built on. There's there's essentially a mechanical switch where, when you lower the right marker, right, you'll you'll push the hydraulic lever forward to lower the right marker, and then when you raise it, it flips a mechanical switch or a a piece of iron bar for lack of a better phrase that will automatically flip it over and so the next time you push that lever forward it will engage the opposite side marker and so it just keeps on repeating back and forth and back and forth like that so it's not it's not too unrealistic vanilla where they have one key that drops both markers but what isn't unrealistic is when you hit the button again, it automatically picks up the other marker and drops the other one. That's unrealistic. And then you hit it a third time and it picks up all the markers. That's that's a little unrealistic. If they if they had it like real life, it would you be press it up, you know, press it to lower the marker, press it again to raise that marker, and it would not drop that marker until you press it again and it would drop the marker and then press it again and it would raise it. That would be close to real life, at least for what our print planter is. I cannot imagine any planter working like this one does in real life because you don't want, like here for example, when I r hit the button to raise that marker, never would you want that marker on the other side to drop immediately. You want to make your turn first. So I don't know, I don't know why, you know, that's, seems like it'd just be a little quick programming change that they could do to make that more realistic, but oh well. It's not very functional. Oops. Don't want blinkers. And let's raise. Raise. 
This is a really small field. I think we need to buy a bigger one. This is two fields. So this will be two fields for soybeans. Two really small fields for soybeans. Uh, we'll definitely need more corn than soybeans. So even though I don't think this is enough soybeans for the pigs, I think we should buy another field and plant it with corn because you know pigs take 50% corn and only is it, it's either 20 or 25% uh, protein for soybeans we have plenty of wheat and barley proportionally so I mean for that matter I still don't even know if we have enough wheat and barley for the pigs so that's something that remains to be seen I think I think we should really buy another field and plant corn I mean, really, ideally buying two more fields and plant a bigger one with corn and a smaller one with soybeans, that would be ideal. But I don't think we're going to have time. Well, we might have time for that. Let's just see how this day goes. You know, I think that's part of my problem. I make way too many plans before, before I actually can do those plans and they're just too far in advance and... And the plan always ends up changing, and then makes me look dumb, and yeah. If I was smart, I would, right now I have to use my keyboard for the marker. I'm not sure which button it is on my side console. Yeah, I think it, whoops, did I not raise that marker? Oh well. Okay, let's take this wide turn so we don't get in the shrubbery there. Avoid the fence and go back. And I think this is the last pass or maybe maybe one more. I think this will get it. Yeah, this should get it. I'll double check there. Certainly looks gotten. Done did look good. All right, and I think we can get through to the other field over here. You know, while we're here, where is, where's the sign? Okay, let's run over to this. Let's just see how much a field around this size would cost and if we even have the loan capacity to do it. So, this field costs 137. That's not too bad, actually, for a field this size. This would be... This would be a pretty good... Pretty good size field. And what about... So what's the size of... 25 might look like it's a little bigger. You know, something we could really do in the winter. I think we're going to cut down all those trees. And we can connect these fields. I think that's a great plan. We'll do that. Then this can be one field. That's a great plan. What about field 10? That looks pretty good size too. That actually looks like a pretty field. Oh, they're all pretty. Oh, we got caught on barbed wire. And we are running. We don't really have time for this. Ooh, is that more clouds moving in? Uh-oh. No, maybe not. I don't know. That looks a little bit darker over there to the north. I don't really know what direction storms blow in from out in this land. 188. So that field is probably... Oh, wait. Did we just run past another one? 10? We can combine those eventually. 11 and 10. I, I should say that I did take out a couple fences in between fields so I could eventually build up our land a little bit and, you know, start combining a few of these fields. I, I should say that. So not all of that is by design. All right, so to be able to do that, we need at least a loan of a couple hundred thousand. We don't want to push it too tight because... We're probably going to have to take out a loan to buy more stuff in the future. So let's 
See how big of a loan we can take. Oh my goodness. This is going to not... This is risky. This is really risky. 285000 We could actually buy a couple. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to buy field number one. It's an odd shape, but... Wait, field number one? Yeah, this is one. No, 27. Not one. Should we buy one? That's really close to the farm there. Oh, goodness. I hate decisions, decisions, decisions. All right, so this is 137. If we buy this one, that is 137. And then I really want to buy 10. It's a perfect square field. We'll be able to plant it quicker, which, you know, one might be great, but we're going to need to plant it quick. And we can't afford all that turning around. So 10 is one. So that's roughly 140. I think we're going to buy both of these. What do you guys think? Should we do it? Should we do it? Let's do it. They're already called. Yeah, let's do it. Let's buy it. Yeah, it's a pretty steep price, but it's nice and square. And then we will come over here and buy field number 27. Now, field 10. I'm thinking we need a lot of corn. So here's what I'm thinking. Oh, goodness. We only have $45,000 currently in debt oh that's right we have more equity so that allows us well it's really land bought and borrowed but the the seasons mod that might be kind of a mistake the seasons mod allows you to take a loan up based on your equity and so it since it shows that we own those two fields we have a little bit more equity according to the game so it allows us to take out a little bit more of a loan However, it's not real equity because we bought that land on borrowed money. So, anyway, the loan interest is going to skyrocket, but I think I think this will be really beneficial. So, let's do 27 is bigger. Let's do that one with corn. We really should have done this field corn, but we didn't know. We could rip this. I can't remember if this is a fence that I took out or not, but we'll eventually rip this up and combine these two fields into one. I think this is a fence I removed. Yeah. Uh, we'll, so that's what we'll do. We'll combine these fields into one next year. So let's plant this field soybeans. So that way we can crop rotation into corn next year. I think that's a good plan. And then we'll do field 25 and 10 with corn. That still might not be enough corn, but... I think... I think that's what we need to do. All right, 27. Which way are we? Oh, I had another one of these diagonal angled fields. So it kind of looks like we're screwed either way here. Either we can plant north to south, and then we'll get some really short rows over there on the east side. Or we can plant east to west, and then we'll get really short rows on the south side. It does look like the, which way, ah, hate decisions. Which way is longer? It looks, does it look longer north to south? Can I measure with my thumb? <laughs> Let's, maybe if we get a bigger, I think, I think we want to do it this way. So let's plant end rows going this way. And we will we'll use GPS for this, but not on the end rows. So this will be end row. Still planting soybeans. That is what we want. We are fertilizing. We have a marker down. All right, just making sure I have all my bases covered. I think we're good here. So let's, if I can drive straight, let's try to get a better view of this field. I think I think we did the right thing. Oh, I cannot drive. Oh, that's why you don't zoom out. Stupid, stupid Daniel. <laughs> that, 
That is not good. Okay. Let's <laughs> let's go get rid of that mistake. Oh goodness. Now I can't even back up straight. Okay. Let's go forward. Drop it right about now. Let's fix that ugliness. And we'll turn around and do another set of end rows. How does that sound? Sounds good. That's great. Thanks for the input, guys. Seriously, though, I would like all kinds of input. If you want to know what to name our next tractor... Well, you don't know what our next tractor is. You kind of got to know what it looks like before you name it. Anyway, I like input, so if you have any thoughts on what we should do around the farm, let me know. I would love this to be kind of a, a viewer-driven system where I can... What's that called? An elite? I, I'm trying to think of all the different forms of government in uh, the Paradox games. I'm not sure what it's called when it's kind of democratic, but the but, but one person can overrule and decide things that is best for the f people, for the farm in this case. Anyway, that is what I am thinking we will do. You know, I'll 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 adhere to your suggestions if they're good ones, but if you know, obviously if they're stupid or unreal, well, I don't want to say stupid. That that could be mean. Well, maybe not. Some some suggestions are stupid. But if you... Okay, maybe not stupid. That's too harsh of a word. If you are trying to be realistic, I don't think you'll make a stupid suggestion. I'm talking about stupid things like, oh, I think you should... I don't know. I can't even think of an example. Uh... As long as you're being realistic in your suggestions, I think that they will not be stupid. Anyway, I might overrule them if I say that that's not the best for the farm, or I really had this plan, we'll try that next year, or something like that. But, you know, I think that it'd be fun to have kind of a... Oh, which marker? That's the wrong one. Yeah, so let's do that marker. And, oh, that's bad. That... I think I've said it before, but driving a planter backwards could break it. I know on mechanical planters, they are really not designed to drive backwards because just the the way that it mechanically feeds, you know, it doesn't have a vacuum pump. It, it feeds it based on gears and a drive wheel. So that could actually cause some damage. I... I'm not so sure about a vacuum driven system. It might not be as dangerous because, because you know, you don't have a mechanical drive gear system, but it's still probably not good practice to drive something that's made to only go forward uh, backwards. This is gonna be a tight turn, but I think, I think we got it. Uh, let's, let's just straighten out a little bit. Alright. That should do it. And crank it a little bit to the left. And, yeah, let's just, let's just finish straight now. This is a habit from corn planting. You generally, if you're not straight coming into the row, you want to make sure that you're straight, so... Yeah, that's that should be straight enough. Got a little angle, but that's that much isn't too bad. And let's lower. Here we go. All right, almost got the end rows planted this direction. We'll head to the what is that? The south. Yeah, we'll head to the south and plant the end rows down there. I think that yeah, this is the tough part. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna have to do some diagonal end rows at some point or another. So we will go south on this side of the field and so let me explain the reason I chose to go this direction is because I didn't want to have to climb up this hill the entire map if we you know if, if the main rows are north to south oops I didn't need a marker if we're, we're finished with the end rows if our main rows are north to south like they like they are now then we it's, I think it's less of a hill that we're going to have to fight. Also, you want to consider... 
you always want to consider erosion when you are planting and I think that this way will help us with erosion a little bit more because the rows are going to be going you know if you imagine water running off this ridge it's going to want to run down towards the center of the field so I was kind of thinking if we plant this way it'll hopefully help prevent a little bit of the soil erosion going that way but you know then of course you also have the hills to contend to that you know will cause runner water to run north to south so anyway it's kind of a crapshoot but that's what I did and we want automatic width we want a new path going this way and let's move it over to the left a little bit a little bit more we'll get rid of the offset and let's back up so we can come in straight straight enough all right, we will drop our planner. Wait, I didn't, I think I might have, yeah. We weren't able to go all the way because of the fence there. So let's raise the planner, go backwards just a little bit and we'll drop it, I think around there. That's just the little bit I didn't, I couldn't plant, finish planting those end rows because otherwise I would have ran into the fence. So that's what I did there. Let's rid of that and like I say I think I say I think I normally say I like to drive inside the tractor as much as possible um let me interrupt myself here we will this is kind of an awkward long diagonal so we'll just turn off GPS and plant here once while we finish our end rows what I was saying is I normally try to drive inside the tractor because not only is it realistic, but it's also just easier when you are playing and driving around. It's just a lot easier not to hit things. It's a lot easier to turn and back up and steer. But when we're on GPS, you know, that doesn't really matter anyway. So I, oh, I think I just accidentally raised the planner. And I think we are still, yeah, we'll call that good enough. If we need to run out straight there and back up once or twice, then that's not the end of the world. Planting diagonal end rows. And yeah, these short rows are going to be kind of a pain. I almost want to start over on this side of the field just so we get the, the worst of it done first. But we'll, we'll stick with plan. Although we do have, kind of have a lot of space down there to turn around. We might not, we might not need to. Let's just go all the way. That fence is a little far away. We might not need to plant... What would that be? Is this an 8-row planter? That would be 8, 16. Um, we might get away with 16 end rows here since... We might get away with 16 end rows since there's a lot of room over there to turn around on, but I don't... You're, you're just safer planting more end rows. It's a lot easier to turn around. Give yourself more room. It makes it quicker, which, you know, as is important with time being short. You can always use more. Most efficient way of doing things is best. And you know, also, yeah, when you turn it around on an angle like that, you typically need more room because, well, although we'll be going from the longer side to the shorter side, so we'll be turning left at this end, which will actually mean that we don't necessarily need that much more room. If we were doing the other way, if we were coming out on the short and turning right, then we would generally need more room. But, um... Okay. Decisions, decisions. I am <laughs> I'm pretty bad at decisions, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. We'll, let's do one more set. I think one more set would be good here. I think we'll be fine getting away with this. Oh, kind of steering downhill there with the slope. 
I think we'll be good with just one more set of end rows, and then we'll start. We'll just we'll just start with the short rows down here. I mean, stay with the short rows down here. And then we can finish our short rows up. We're going to have to veer off and avoid that tree a little bit. Oh, that's kind of ugly. I could have just, I probably should have just pulled up early and gotten what I missed over here. All right, let's pull up this and see we're in negative 23. Let's see where that other line is. Yeah, I think we're... We're pretty much on the GPS path. Let's, let's see how off. Yeah. All right. That's perfect. This field is perfect width for coming out just about perfectly like that. Look, we don't even have to shut off any planter boxes out there. Typically, when you do the edge of a field, you know, to make it perfect, you have to shut off some of the boxes there on the edge. So you're not planting over what has already been planted. But I don't think we have to do that. So we want row number 22. And drop it. Alright. These are going to be a pain, but they'll be over quickly. Typically, unless you are in a super hurry, you'll see a lot of the bigger farmers who think that they don't have enough time, and some of them really don't. But really, if you are, if you want the most accurate depth, you do not. Oops, I think I hit it a little bit too late. You do not drop the planter while moving. You want to stop the planter drop it all the way and then go and the reason for that is if you imagine the the depth measurement right it, it it's set to it's set to insert the seed at a certain depth well if the planter is coming out of the soil while it's planting the last few feet before you are able to turn around you can imagine that that depth is probably not going to be very accurate so the right way to do it is you stop the planter when you are raising and you stop the planter when you are lowering so that way you get that perfect accurate depth all the way to the end for example we will run to the edge stop and then raise as opposed to i'll show you the way that you don't want to do it but this is the way that most everybody does plant just because they're in a hurry and where did we leave off right there Okay, so you line it up, and you go, and you drop it on the fly, and as you can imagine, the depth, you know, is going to start out bad, and it gets better as the planter fully drops. So, it's just, it's a way that you can be more accurate. Another way to be more accurate is to have GPS, and a really expensive planter which automatically knows when to shut off because it has a it basically has mapped out on the field where you've already planted right so it knows even if you drop the planter a little early or if you leave it in the ground like that it knows hey that's already planted i'm not going to drop any seed where you've already planted which is actually what the what the fake game does just because it doesn't plant over something that's already seeded but It doesn't do it based on GPS. Uh, went in a little early there. All right, starting to get a little longer rows over here. Looking good. That's kind of pretty with the creek down there. No time to stop and enjoy the beauty, though. Got to go. I think for the purposes of... This game, though, I'm going to have to drop the planter a little early. It's not a good habit to get into, especially <laughs> if I take that habit into real life. But 
we're kind of trying to beat the rain, otherwise we cannot plant. Gotta get our plants planted. And let's drop at the edge of the angle and away we go. Chugging up this hill. We are back to $786. I'm looking forward to selling the milk and see what we get for the milk. It remains to be seen how profitable our animals are. It's, you know, I mean, they're not really 100% productivity most of this time, so... I'm not sure what the magic cutoff is for, you know, if you're below X percentage productivity, then it is not profitable. I'm sure there's, I'm sure there's some magic number there, but... That'd take a lot of uh, figuring out. This should be, you know, one thing we did not do is we did not fertilize this field before we planted. I think we did that with all the other fields. So this field is going to be one stage of fertilizer behind the rest. So I think we're going to have to weed it. And then that'll be the second layer. And then we're going to have to... We're going to have to waste a little money and... Well, not waste money, but we're going to have to spend money and get get an extra set of fertilization in there after it's already been grown so the plan is I'm thinking if we since we can harvest wheat early on the fields that we harvested wheat will spread manure and slurry and then we'll cultivate and that will be our corn fields right so anything with barley canola wheat will become corn and it already have one thing of fertilizer with the planting, it'll have a second pass of fertilizer on it when you plant. And then we'll have to weed it once and it will have that third layer of fertilizer. So that's the way that we can get three fertilizers with corn. With the rest of the crops, I'm thinking that we're not gonna have enough manure and slurry to go all the way around for everything. So is this the last pass? I think this is it. So we're not going to have enough manure slurry to go around for everything, so that means we're going to have to do a fertilization pass in the fall or before we plant in the spring. But we can no-till, so we're not necessarily going to need... Oh, this isn't the last pass. That's weird. I thought it looked like... Down there, it looks like we were on the last pass, but maybe not. I hope we have enough seed to finish this field. Might run out. I think we got it. Yeah, down and back. Hobbit's tail. Um, what was I saying? I think that we... Let's see, so... After corn, corn will become... So, so we do want, do we want to do rotation corn, soybeans, then wheat, or soybeans, corn, wheat? Oh, that's right. It's it's at an angle down here. I forgot. And then I forgot we we did one of those rows. I forgot we curved it like that. So this will be the last pass. Nope, not that one. This one. So let's do corn. Oh, that's right, because corn's going to be after wheat. So we got to do corn, soybeans, wheat. So the corn fields will become soybeans the next year. The soybean fields will become wheat slash barley the next year. I don't think we'll grow canola. I think we'll just grow soybeans. All right, that takes care of soybean planting. Now we just have two more fields of corn. Let's take this out to the main... Let's see, where's a good place to fill up with seed? It's right next to the entrance here. I think that's a great place to leave it. For now, though, we'll call that an episode, and we'll take care of those things in the next one. So, until then, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.